welcome to a windy the uh, Essex allotment farm. Uh, if you don't know me by name now, blah, 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 start again. If you don't know me by now, my name's Alex. Uh, this is my commercial market garden. I grow organically for chefs, veg box service, and uh, farmers markets here in Essex. So we're on the um, farm today. We're having a massive tidy up and a reshuffle round in the communal area, which I'll show you when, as and when it gets a little bit better. I've got some help down here on the farm in the shape of my mum and dad, which is always handy. Um, my mum's going to sort out the shed in the communal area. My dad uh, is down the far end doing some bed prep and some path wood chipping. And then I am going to do something with these new compost bins um, that I picked up this morning from Facebook Marketplace. So uh, I thought I'd bring you along for the journey. Okay, so it's crazy windy down here today, so you will have to put up with a little bit of wind in the videos. I'll try to block it as best as you can. Um, down here in the composting area, we'll catch up with how the shed and the communal area looks in a minute. Um, I purchased these new compost turners, or quick compost bins, or rotating compost bins, whatever you want to call them, uh, for next to nothing off Facebook Marketplace this morning. By the way, if you keep seeing this in and out of the shot, that's me attempting to block the wind from the camera um, and create a bit of a wind tunnel. Um, anyway, yes, I bought these off uh, Facebook Marketplace this morning. Oh, that's doing nothing. Um, let me see if I can do any better. So yes, I bought these off Facebook Marketplace this morning. They've both got uh, the lids. Um, I've just positioned them next to my compost bins, which you'll have seen if you watched um, a video earlier in the month or last month now, since we're in February. So these things, they just spin and turn um, on their axis. So they need a bit of uh, oil. They're obviously second hand. They're fairly clean inside. Um, so I'm gonna give them a hose out and a bit of a clean, and then I'm gonna add some uh, materials to them in an attempt to make some really, really quick compost. Um, so let me do that with you now. So the first thing I'm going to add to this compost is a bag of this rabbit manure and rabbit bedding. It's got straw, rabbit manure, rabbit urine, I guess, um, and sort of wood shavings that start to compost down in the first few months in these bags. So that's gonna go in there as a brown. I'm gonna tip that in there now, one sec. Okay, so I've emptied that bag into the bin. It's probably about maybe a fifth full in there now. Um, so we need to grab some more materials. Some of the bottom of that stuff was quite well rotted, which is good. It's quite damp and wet at the bottom, which is good because we need uh, about 50% moisture in this uh, bin. Right, the next thing I've got is some coffee grounds from the coffee shop, again, which you'll be familiar with if you have followed any of my previous vlogs. So let me go and get some of that now. So if you're new to my channel, this is used coffee grounds from a local coffee shop. It's, I think, a seven litre bucket that I collect every third day. And so I've got lots and lots of quality uh, nitrogen. I'm gonna put maybe about half this tub in uh, now, see how we look, give it a spin, um, and then probably repeat the process again, put another bag of the uh, rabbit manure in, and, and then maybe some more coffee grounds. But we'll have a look, um, I'm gonna start now, and I'll show you where I get to. Oh, I'm out of breath after that. Yeah, it's heavier than it looks to spin it. Oh, just some time that I picked up, hold on. So with two full bags of that manure and maybe, well, nearly all of the coffee grounds, that's now looking pretty full. Do want to keep some air in it to keep the air in there. It helps aid the decomp decomposition. It is a little bit dry at the moment. So what I'm going to do, as soon as the whole farm's pretty dry, is just jump in the lawn, uh, or grab the lawnmower out of the shed. And I'm going to quickly clip some grass from the outside of the fence, just probably, I'm just over there somewhere, and add some moist grass clippings to this, to, again, as a bit of a nitrogen booster, a little bit of something different. Um, and then I'm just going to put a handful of semi-rotted compost from my compost bins already in there, as in a bit of a, again, a bit of an accelerant. Um, and so, yeah, I'll show you that now.
obviously not the best of video I'll ever do today. The uh, camera fell off its perch, but you can see now that the uh, full um, lawnmowers, you know, catchment basket, whatever they're called, full of grass cuttings has now gone in here. Uh, you can see that, I mean, it still needs a little bit of mixing up, but with those few spins that I've given it already, it's started to mix into uh, the other materials that I put in the compost. So, like I said, I'm just gonna grab now the last bit, which I'm just gonna put a small bucket's worth of already composted soil into this, and then I'm gonna leave that one and we'll see how fast it breaks down. Obviously, I'll keep you updated. I'm over here in my green waste area. Again, for those that have followed, I found sound like a broken record. You'll be familiar with this for those who are new. This is my original compost base, which I've redone uh, over next to where the spinners are. This is all like where I now put all the weeds and stuff that needs to be composted for a lot longer. And other stuff underneath is really, really well rotted. It's probably been there for over a year. So I'm gonna dig down, get some of the stuff from under the surface where it's nice. Just use it again as a bit of an accelerator. I've got a five litre bucket here. Uh, I'm gonna fill that up and add that and that'll be the final ingredient to my spinner. So let's get that done. Right, so this is the stuff that was about halfway down the uh, that compost pile. Didn't have to dig all the way to the bottom. As you can see, there's a few living roots still left in there. Um, I'll get rid of that, that's an old salad onion. But uh, there's loads of microbial and biodiversity in this stuff. So this will be nice to add to it. Like I said, just as an accelerant, you can see the worm. The worm life is absolutely packed full of worms. Um, this will be good to put in there and use as an accelerant and add some biodiversity to what we've put in that spinner already. Literally, every time I go and press the button, the, the wind drops, I press the record button and the wind starts howling. But um, yeah, what I should say, just before I tip this in, is I'd be happy to put that on my beds now, but like, that's complete compost in my mind. Um, just because I know some of you are probably thinking, why is he not using that? But yeah, it's ready and I'm using it as an accelerant. So there we go, I put that uh, compost in there. And you can see some real good activity in the soil. I did put that last bit of the coffee grounds in as well. So we've gone for a full bucket of coffee grounds, two bags of uh, the manure and bedding mix. We've got one basket of grass clippings and a, about five liters of you know, completed but rough compost. That'll be the mix that we'll try this time in the spinner. Uh, I'll get the foot compost thermometer in there over the next couple of days and see what it fires up to. Keep giving it a spin every few days. Try and get some real heat in here and see what how quickly we can make something that um, can be spread on the beds and used as a compost mulch for the season ahead. Wish me luck. Uh, I've obviously got two um, compost spinners, um, but I've gone with my best guess of what to put in the first one uh, that I think might work and might produce something great. So we are gonna let that fire up and hopefully heat up and um, get warm and see what happens over the next week or two. And then I want to adjust, or if I've got it right first time, hallelujah, but um, I won't start the second one until I've seen what's happening in the first one over the next week or so, how quickly it starts to heat up, um, whether it gets too wet, gets too dry, um, whether I need to adjust the materials, and then we'll probably have an adjusted recipe uh, ready for barrel two, which will start in about a week's time. But like always, I'll try and keep you updated on these things and uh, let you know how it goes. Totally forgot to film an ending to that uh, vlog at the farm. I've just got home after some lunch at a cafe. Um, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.